Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Uh, when I bought this place, my children were one and two. So I'm walking down the dock and it collapsed. It was an old wooden dock and the ramp collapsed. So I immediately called the local dock builder. I built the float with his materials, and then when it came time to put it in the water, we launched it, and he came in to put pilings. Well, you need a permit for that. I went to a local lawyer to prepare for the hearing. He rolls out a map of Greenport, and I noticed there was a large parcel out in the water abutting my uh, parcel here. And I said, what's that? He said, you know, you probably own that parcel. Yeah, I came back from the lawyer. I'm all laughing and smiling. My wife said, what are you laughing about? You got, you just got a $2,000 fine. I said, for $2,000, I bought four acres of, uh, of underwater land. Nice oyster. I put a bet on the history of Greenport. That is, there was an oyster industry here. There was, there was absolutely nobody growing. And I, and I said, well, hell, I'll give it a try. You know, there had to be a reason why oysters used to grow here. And sure enough, the rate of flow, I mean, this, the, the, the flush through Greenport Harbor is phenomenal. The entire bay back to Riverhead is in flux constantly. And that's what grows a good, healthy oyster. Plus, we have a hard, sandy bottom, hard rocks and sand, so we don't have mud. So it's just a perfect spot for uh, oysters. And we, you know, we lucked into it because we believed in the history of Greenport. This will be our 10th season uh, starting September. September 1st is the beginning of our season. We started growing 50,000 oysters that first year. And we, of course, we sold out, but, but I had, you know, a half dozen customers in the city. And now this last year, last September through March, from September to March, every week I took one ton. I personally gathered up one ton of oysters, loaded my van and delivered them into, the, into Manhattan. Uh, you know, to me that was a threshold, a ton means something. I looked at the tax records of the uh, last big grower that went out of business in the 60s and you know, it was thousands of bushels a week. And we're, do you know, we're doing thousands of oysters a week, well I hope to be doing thousands of bushels in five years. This bay is to a totally under underutilized resource. If you go to a similar bay on the, east on the Atlantic coast of France, Every morning, a thousand men are going out in their boats to harvest and tend oysters. You know, this bay used to be like that. I don't know if we'll ever see the, the thousand people, but it should revive. This, this is a, a, a world-class product. The Greenport Oyster is as good as they get. There's not a better oyster in the world. My software business was at One Union Square, and I used to entertain all the time at Union Square Cafe. I knocked on the door. I literally had a half dozen oysters in my, in my hands. I walked, they took me back. Ben opened them up. He said, I love these oysters. He called up Colicchio. Colicchio bought, ben bought a bag, Colicchio bought two bags, and then he called Eleven Madison, and Heffernan was a chef that he bought a bag. And that was, I took 400 oysters into the next week in, in my Cadillac <laughs> into uh, Danny Myers, three of Danny Myers' restaurants, and that's how I started. It's very hard work, strenuous, it keeps me healthy. I eat well. I eat all the oysters I want, and then I barter for fish with the local guys. And, uh, and it gets me back in the city. I get in the city three days a week, two or three days a week, which, you know, I, I, get, a, I get that buzz from the city. So I, I, and it's nice to have a product that everybody wants. Right now, the business is here, high-end restaurants. If you ever get the oyster back into the home, people start eating it in the home, it's a factor of 10. Now, 100 years ago, if you were to get a 100-year-old cookbook and look at it, you would see eight pages, pages of oyster recipes. We have a part-time guy when he gets busy in the fall. So we have two now. I expect about 50 people within five years. And those are jobs that are going to be mainly fall and winter when it's dead out here. I mean, you can go to, you can go to the coffee shop in winter, take your coffee, take your chair and table and sit on Main Street, and you're not going to bother anybody because nobody's here. 
on a February day. Well, we hope to change that.